Hey guys, I'm John and this is MTB Dev with another episode of Suspension Simplified. Today we're going to talk more about negative air springs. If you haven't watched the first episode on that, go back and watch that before finishing this one. In this graph, we show a positive air spring compared to a coil spring. The x-axis shows displacement and the y-axis shows force we can easily see the challenges facing an air spring. A high breakaway force, a harsh initial stroke, and a wallowy mid-stroke. With this graph, we can see the areas of initial harshness and wallow, as well as the high breakaway point. A high breakaway force also implies that the spring will top out harshly if nothing else slows it. This graph shows the addition of a negative air spring and the resultant total air spring. The total air spring is merely the sum of the positive air spring force and the negative air spring force at any given displacement. Here we see the reduced initial harshness and lower breakaway point provided by the negative air spring. However, the negative air spring's initial curve is very steep meaning that the shock will still feel harsh. Furthermore, the issue of wallowing still exists. We obviously need more negative volume. This example shows the spring curve of a shock with a high volume negative air chamber. The overall slope of the total air spring is closer to that of the coil spring, but the breakaway point is higher than with a smaller negative air spring. This is due to the fact that the negative air spring ramps up in much the same way a positive air spring does. The lower the volume, the higher the compression ratio, and the more it resists being compressed towards the end of its stroke. Simply increasing the volume of the negative air chamber here has resulted in a harsh initial stroke and top out. Here we have changed only the transfer port for the positive and negative chambers. Now, the breakaway point is very low, and the areas of initial harshness and wallow are insignificant. Through the mid-stroke, the air spring behaves very similarly to a coil spring. The great advantage here is that we can tune bottom-out resistance by adjusting positive air volume. In this example, progression is relatively high, but we can increase the positive air volume to reduce that. If the progression is too high, the shock manufacturer may elect to give a portion of the negative air volume to the positive air chamber. This will make the initial and mid-stroke less coil-like, but the shock won't ramp up unusably. This is the air can off of a mountain bike shock. If you look closely here, you can see the transfer port. Now when the seal head is directly beneath the transfer port, it connects both the positive and negative chambers together and equalizes the charge. As it moves past the transfer port in either direction, it begins to compress the air on that side. For the compression stroke, it compresses the positive chamber, and on the rebound stroke, it's compressing the negative chamber. Now there's only so much range where you can put this transfer port too far to one side and it'll render that air chamber too progressive while the other air chamber is not progressive enough and needs volume spacers. It's for this reason that negative volume spacers exist. Some modern shock sizes produce a negative air chamber that is too large to ramp up in time to slow the rebounding piston and therefore the compression ratio must be increased. Keep in mind that the air spring's curve essentially rotates about the fixed point of sag. Another option to reduce harsh top out is to add a top out bumper or spring. In summary, we've learned that changing the negative air volume impacts the slope of the initial and mid stroke. Moving the transfer port location changes the relationship between the positive and negative air chambers. Using a large negative air chamber with the wrong transfer port location can make the shock feel worse. Shock layout limits the placement options for the transfer port, as well as positive and negative air volumes. And 
that companies may use negative air volume spacers, bumpers, or springs to help mask the effects of an unusably large negative air chamber. Thanks for watching. If you have any tech questions that you'd like us to break down, please feel free to leave those below.